You are watching NCAA Division I Baseball on the ACC Network Extra. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jim Patterson Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky, where the homestanding number 14-ranked Louisville Cardinals are hosting the number 8-ranked Ole Miss Rebels. Alongside Jeff Gardner, I'm Paul Najar, and Jeff, two thoroughbred programs, and this Ole Miss team brings a lot of offense to this field today. Well, that they do, Paul. Ranked 10th in the country in homers right now. Thomas Taylor is having to, uh, a great season so far. Ole Miss heading into conference play this weekend. Should be exciting midweek matchup. Luke Smith on the bound for the Cardinals. First pitch coming up. Yeah, there you have Luke's scouting report. Luke Smith, the junior out of Champaign, Illinois. This is a guy who's got a four-pitch mix. He's, you're going to see the slider a lot to the righties. He likes to work that curveball to his lefties. Uh, not really crazy with the velo. He's not going to surprise you on the radar gun. But this guy just lives around the zone. Throws a lot of strikes. The key for him is going to be keeping the ball down against this heavy offensive uh, Rebel team. That strike right there, you saw that slider across for a strike. And a shot left center. And corralled easily there by Jake Snyder. That was Anthony Servideo, the right fielder. Retired after three pitches, and that's what Coach McDonald likes to see out of Luke Smith. Yeah, Efficiency absolutely. And leadoff hitter out. Absolutely. Anytime you can get that leadoff guy out, and that's something Smith's going to have to do. Uh, I'm looking at his numbers here. He's 8 for 16 against the leadoff guys uh, with them ending up on base. And 50% right there is not something, uh, not a stat you want to live at. Greg Hessinger comes to the plate. He is the shortstop here, and you know that name, Kessinger. His grandpa, the old shortstop for the Chicago Cubs. He is calling this game for Ole Miss right now on radio. Doug Kessinger. Very nice. Longtime Cubby shortstop infielder in the 70s. Great Kessinger, the shortstop here for the Rebels. He's got it in the jeans. You like those stories, I tell you. Got to speak with Grandpa Kessinger a little earlier. What a nice man. It's reminiscent. The ball there. Luke Smith behind three and one. And locating that fastball, that's what Coach McDonald and the scouting report of this team, we got to get that fastball in the zone. Yeah, not just in the zone, but down. I mean... The Rebels here, they, they got no problem swinging at, at a fastball. You know, with the, these home run numbers between Dillard with seven. And, um, you know, they're, they're really tearing it up offensively. That one dings off Kessinger's foot. Off the uh, shin guard. Foot guard. He'll take the base. Getting that leadoff runner out of the way. Getting off that leadoff hitter out of the way. Important especially getting these uh, in a position like this where now you've got Kessinger on on base. Ooh. Yeah, he wears that one right off the ankle. The new rule in college baseball this year, you have to make an attempt to get out of the way of the ball. If you don't, the actually the, the pitch, if the umpire decides that you didn't make a, a good enough attempt, actually can be ruled a strike. Something me and Jim talked about. Uh, Jim and I talked about this past weekend against Boston College. I was indifferent about it. Must have switched that lineup because Keenan is on first. Says. Shot to right. Oh, terrific catch. And at the end of the first inning, that great play by Ethan Stringer sends the cards up to plate. There's Doug McKenzie. Jeff, the scouting report on this freshman lefty. Well, this, as you mentioned, freshman lefty out of Windermere, Florida. This guy has really taken off. Had his first start against East Carolina. Went five innings, gave up just four hits. 
Only one walk with seven Ks. This is a guy who's going to command the zone. Not a lot of velocity. There you see a four-pitch mix there. He's going to dominate with his fastball. Look for him to elevate it with two strikes. As long as the Cardinals can keep from chasing it, leaving the, the breaking balls down and those two-strike heaters up and away, they'll be in good shape. Bianco in his 19th season. And here's the lineup that he'll face, uh, Nick Hazy will face in Louisville's. Jake Snyder, Tyler Fitzgerald, Logan Wyatt, Danny Orienti, Jared Poland, Drew Campbell, catcher Henry Davis, third baseman Justin Levy, and right fielder who made that fine catch, Ethan Stringer, to close out the top of the first for the cards. Now Snyder. Yeah, that Louisville lineup always subject to change. This is another. I, I don't think they've had two of the same lineups this season. Yeah, probably not back to back. This is it's something that Coach Mack really likes to do. Um, as we head into conference play, as I mentioned, uh, Louisville is one weekend into conference play already. As they start to get two to three weekends in, yeah, that's when you'll really start to see that lineup start to solidify. You'll see guys really taking to their role. Uh, whatever, wherever that may be. But early on in the season, Coach Mack likes to get a lot of guys out there, get a lot of opportunity uh, just to see who's going to flourish later on this season. Snyder. Deny there. Stays away from that. That one. Junior from Champaign, Illinois. Sets the table for Coach McDonald. And that solid wrap through the box. And that's what you do, lefty on lefty. Put it up through the middle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Snyder does a great job right there of staying on it. One of the problems that facing left on left is it's, it's real easy to want to pull off, right? As a left-handed hitter myself, when I'm facing a lefty, a lot of times it looks like that pitch is coming from behind me. But you've got to credit Snyder right here. Keeps that front shoulder in, watches that ball, lets it get deep, and crushes it up the middle. Really quick swing. Compact from Jake Snyder came into this game hitting 250 and 52 at bats with two doubles and a triple. And now we move on to Tyler Fitzgerald. Let's see what move Nikahi, Nick Nikhazy may have. And that's where you have to watch closely at the bag. It's that front knee. Notice Snyder moved back on that pitch. It looked like a, a deception there a little bit. Yeah, well, if you look at Nikhazy's delivery, it's it's really kind of tricky. He looks like when he goes to the plate, he kind of sticks that right leg out almost like he's going to first base and kind of sweeps it around. If you take a look here, he gets a big leg kick right there and kind of sweeps it out. Oh, and sweep that one to left deep. It's going, and that one gives Louisville the 2-0 lead. Tyler Fitzgerald just turns on that shot. And that is his third homer of the season. 18 RBIs now. Tyler Fitzgerald putting Louisville ahead 2-0. That's a great piece of hitting by Fitzgerald right there. And that's one of the one of the beauties of having a guy like Snyder on base. You get to Casey, what did he do as soon as Jake got on base? He picked off, right? So you know that in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I've got somebody on first base who may steal. That allows him to get a little bit lax when it comes to thinking about Fitzgerald. And a good hitter like Fitzgerald, he's going to make you pay for it as he did right there. Fitzgerald takes that pitch up, in, and straight. Wind blowing a little bit out to left field. Logan Wyatt, the hitting star for the Cardinals. 356, the slugging percentage of 511. Home run, nine RBI. Yeah, why? This is a big kid, big local guy. If the cards can get him swinging, uh, you know he's he's walking a lot, he's getting on base a lot, but the cards really need him to start driving in some runs. Uh, I've been there where you're a big guy and everybody expects you to hit a homer every time, but it can get frustrating with with people on you about that. Definitely one of the, the finer hitters in this Louisville lineup. Fine breaking ball from McKay's. He gets him out ahead of it. One and two on the count. 
You were a member of those back-to-back -back Louisville Omaha bound teams in 2013 and 14. In the middle of that lineup, some big players around you. Dan McDonald looking to get his team back. And this intersectional matchup is just terrific. SEC, ACC, two top 15 teams and, and, and two coaches that know each other and have known each other so well in the past, uh, since 2000, when Coach Bianco tabbed Dan McDonald to be his head recruiter at Ole Miss. And that one, nice sweeping breaking ball from McKaysey, retires Wyatt. Yeah, there's a great pitch by the McKaysey. Gets Wyatt out over his front foot. Gets out and around a little bit. There you see Coach Mack there. As you mentioned, there's a lot of ties here between uh, Coach McDonald and Coach Bianco. Um, Coach Mack spending quite a few seasons over at Ole Miss as a recruiting coordinator. And we used to joke when we played here that I think there was maybe two years that we played Ole Miss, and we used to choke around that it was kind of like scrimmaging because from the time they showed up to the ballpark, both pregame routines as well as, um, you know, what we did during the game was all pretty similar uh, in in uh, in those activities. It's a great chat with Coach McDonald before the game. The lessons learned from Coach Bianco and his Ole Miss Rebels when called strike. 0-2 now on Oriente, the DH for Louisville. Danny Oriente, but Coach Mack said, I was asked by Coach Bianco to be the best recruiter in the nation, tireless worker. Brought some of that fouling off to this, uh, to this program here in Louisville. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Coach Mack got here. He's, uh, that's one of the big things that he he stresses a lot is, is working hard he, he says that the best players love to practice and really that's true some of the best guys I've ever played with they love to train they loved um, really uh, just tuning up every bit of, of talent and athleticism they had and the Casey settling in gets back to back swinging strikeouts the three and four hitters of the Cardinals coach McDonald made the relate a funny story about coming into the offices every day singing a different song he said you know my wife really hated that but the guys it it old miss they sort of would get on his case about his uh, habit of coming in always with a fresh tune every day and see that's a new story because coach mack used to give me a lot of trouble for singing all the time and now i'm gonna have to wear him out for that that sounds like a double standard to me oh and a nice wrap there pull it deep to left and that one is a long out, but well struck. Two runs for the cards. After well, Luke Smith did a great job in the first inning, sitting down the Ole Miss lineup. There you have the scouting report. He's a strike thrower. Said that he was going to live around the zone. Interesting look out there, rocking the tweeners. Not something that you see from a lot of guys, but. Ball, it tells me this guy's confident. You got to have some confidence if uh, if you're going to rock the tweeners, the, especially the baggy tweeners out there like that. The batting the, the batting lineup for Ole Miss. We had Serviedo, Kessinger, Keen, and Dillard, Olenek, uh, Dillard and Olenek, the two big hitters. Now Olenek up to the plate. Ryan Olenek hit it 458. Cole Zabowski. Kevin Graham, Jacob Adams, and then following by Carl Grindle at the bottom of the lineup. Olenek tapper to first. And a nice, easy Logan Wyatt unassisted put out. Yeah, Olenek and Dill are definitely leading this offense. Uh, Olenek not, not really with the power numbers of Dillard, but still batting average as high as he's got. It, it's a, that's a treat to have in the middle of your lineup. Drives in those runs as well. Kolzabowski now. Luke, a little difficult. Uh, a little difficulty in the first inning with Keenan and getting him hit, but now finding the plate a little better. 1 1 here. On Zabowski. Yeah, he's settling in. He's this is a junior college guy. 
not a not a super young guy. Probably new to a lot of the stuff here at, at U of L at the, the Division One level. But overall, like I said, it just seems like a confident guy. Guy's going to get up there, throw strikes. Kind of reminds me of a, a guy I played with by the name of Travis Tingle. Mm. Guy who, when he got on the mound, man, he just loved to compete. Loved to compete. That is a competitor's pitch as he gets the six foot five, 240 pounds of Bowski looking with some real nice location. Low and in on the corner to retire Zabowski. Kevin Graham, DH for the Rebels. Promptly puts a charge into that deep to right center. Stringer back off his glove, off the wall. Graham will race to third, standing it. What a crack. That's two that they've got. Maybe a little elevation from Smith on those. A little bit, but that's that's just that's what you're gonna get with Ole Miss. I mean You've got to credit them. They are coming out aggressive. Great swing. But here's where Stringer goes wrong. See how he's inching his way into that, that wall. You've got to, as, as soon as you can tell that that, uh, that ball is going to, you're not going to be able to camp under it. You've got to get back and find the wall and then work in. Have he gotten back, found the wall first? That's, a, that's an easy play. He's making it just standing up. Made the play in the first inning. Couldn't quite pull that one in. That's ruled a hit. So a three-base hit for Kevin Grant. Right. Stringer, a, a solid defender, but just got a little bit lax right there. It's something that you see from a lot of young and sometimes inexperienced outfielders. You see guys, once they get around that wall, they like to inch their way uh, back towards it. Best, uh, best way to attack that is to get to the wall first and work your way in. Nice breaking ball there from Smith. Smith, one strike away from two scoreless innings. That's a good pitch right there. He wanted that one. Yeah, I think the Cardinal faithful wanted it too. That one looks good. Right there on the inside corner. Sometimes you can't always get that, though, which is... Let's take another look right here. Jacob Adams at the plate. That's nope. a good pitch. Good pitch, just a little bit inside. Davis does his best to pull it back over the plate. Nothing going, but he sets him up. He goes with that change up low and away. He gets Adams' eyes looking out over the plate with something soft and then comes in with a hard heater in on his hands. Henry Davis, the freshman catcher for the Cards. Coach is impressed with the way he works behind the dish, especially in pitch framing and pitch reception. Absolutely. You've got to see him a few times. Yeah, absolutely. Does a great job behind the dish. Adams works the walk. Now first and third for the Rebels. Left filter, Carl Grindel, or Gindel steps in. Not many holes in this Ole Miss lineup. No, definitely not. They're the sophomore. Done a great job so far this season with their offense. Sophomore Gendel batting ninth inning. 308. You love to have that production at the bottom of the lineup. Double. Five run runs batted in. Is that one off? First and third, two outs. You definitely don't want to turn up, the, turn over this lineup. So peppering the, the zone with strikes here, imperative for Smith. Yeah, it's a bit of a sticky situation with you, know, you get it, get a team like Ole Miss who really from top to bottom can swing it. Even though there's a two, there's two outs, a runner being in scoring position, and it's still a little bit tricky here. Guy on in the first, he puts two guys on in the second, but both times leadoff hitter, which was a key for Luke Smith, was retired, just as in the first inning. What I like, 
I like what Smith's doing here, though. He's keeping these guys off balance. A lot of off-speed stuff away. When he goes to the fastball, he's coming in, coming in and he's going hard. Really making it difficult for these guys to get the bat around. Judah Gendel. Crowd here, spurring him on. Good job. Interesting. One of the first nice days of weather here in the Ville. Got a nice crowd here at Patterson Stadium. Just a few. There you have today's weather. 53. Gentle breeze at four miles an hour out of the north. Was blowing out the left on that home run shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe helped it a little bit. Just believe, enough. Believe it or not, the first home game for the Cards to start on its scheduled time and date. The one and two. Weather hasn't been very cooperative this spring, but a beautiful day for baseball today. Look at the umpire waving that. Waving, get it back in the box, Carl. Back in. You got to keep the play going. It's 2 2 now. It's that breaking ball just missed from Smith. Yeah. Luke Smith maintains the perfect 0 0 for all message. 2 0 Louisville. Southeastern Conference preseason poll standings in the East. Vanderbilt at the top of the list. And in the West, LSU and Ole Miss right behind. There's some powerhouses. As we'll see a little later, the uh, rankings, national rankings, Jeff, peppered with SEC teams and ACC as well. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's pretty saturated with the SEC teams by far. But definitely some ACC mixed in there as well, which... It's part of what makes these these midweek matchups so great. You know, you look at Louisville's schedule, they'll play, you know, Ole Miss this week, today and tomorrow. I have two games with Kentucky later on in the season. Mix in a, another midweek with Vanderbilt. It's one of the beauties of playing at University of Louisville is geographically you've got so many good teams scattered all around you that you can mix in those um you know, those midweek games that are really going to boost your RPI, help you out at the end of the season when it comes down to tournament time, and figuring out who's going to host and who isn't. Drew Campbell takes that breaking ball for one and one right across the river, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Just a good three quarters of a mile swim across the Ohio River. Yeah, that's right. From downtown. You did that this morning, right? I have not been in the Ohio in a while as he tops <laughs> that one to first. And Zabowski unassisted for the put out. This brings up freshman catcher Henry Davis. And we mentioned him last inning. Coach Dan McDonald and his staff really like what Davis brings behind the dish and, and just to the field. A real confident presence as a freshman. Well, I think it speaks volumes of, of him being a freshman and uh, mixing in into, into the starting lineup, you know, a couple times a week, especially back there behind the dish. Just being able to, to mix in back there as a freshman says a lot about you. Um, if Coach Mack and Coach Williams feel comfortable with you back there, but especially in, in a position that's known as a leadership role. Freshman from Bedford, New York. Like that, no batting gloves. Those hands. They have taken a work of beating so far this season in the first 15 games for the Cards. Every game has been played in some type of tough weather. Yeah, well, he's, you know, being from New York, I'm sure he's seen some pretty tough winners. He's a native of western Pennsylvania, caught in uh, snow and played in all kinds of conditions. Yeah. As you have as a, as a Louisville area native. And yeah, yeah. You know, the winds blow strong here in the Ville in the, in the spring. A uh, little you never know. You could be catching in the snow in the morning and then, you know, playing in 70-degree weather by 4 o'clock. So. Back and levels the count. 
Two strikes, two and two. Davis. Eyeing up Ziggy. And wraps that one. But easy ball to retrieve. From Olenek. Good swing by Davis. Stays up the middle with it. He's got good direction in his swing. Catches that one a little bit off the end of the bat. There you see the Ole Miss outfield today. Carl Gendel and left. Ryan Olenek in center. Anthony Servideo in right field. Three big bats out there as well. In that third base, Tyler Keenan, great Kessinger at short. At second base, Jacob Adams, and big first baseman, Cole Zabowski. As Justin Levy takes the ball. Zabowski and Keenan, two other guys in this Ole Miss lineup with a handful of homers. Mm. Zabowski with three, and Tyler Keenan with five. Look at Keenan. I mean, 26 RBIs. That guy's really carrying this squad between him and Dillard. Just such an offensive uh, team. It's really going to help him in the, in the SEC with conference play coming up. Keenan, the lefty. Dillard. Hitter. Levy. Fights that one off. Two outs. Like to get it to the ninth hitter. Turn over this lineup early, as Ole Miss did. Those Lead off the third with the top of the order. Servideo. Levy was a staple in last year's lineup. Playing in 61 games. Struggling a little bit here at the beginning as he skies that one out to, to right. That does it. End of two. It's 2 nothing Louisville. Top of the order for Ole Miss coming up. Top 10 in-state battle between ACC and SEC continues tonight on the SEC Network when number 10 Florida State visits number 5 Florida. Check your local listings. As Luke Smith battles Anthony Servideo. Nice hook on the first one for a strike. One and one the count. Yeah, Smith has that off-speed working for him. The kind of sweeping slider. Which again, if he can keep that down, it's going to be really effective against this big lineup. Trying to sneak that 90 mile an hour fastball inside and got it far in and up to make Servadeo pull that one foul. Oh, that's a sweet pitch, Jeff. Yeah, great job right there by Smith. That gives him that change up, gets Servadeo off balance. There's nothing he can do there. Video down for the second time. Third strikeout for Luke Smith. College product for the cards. Kessinger flew out to left field in his first at bat. Grandfather Don, grandfather Don Kessinger on the Old Miss radio broadcast. What a treat it was to get to chat with him for a moment. A memorable game from my youth. Pittsburgh Pirates. Rennie Stennett, second baseman. Seven hits in a ball game against his Cubbies. He said, oh, I remember that well. I was on the field that day. <laughs> we didn't do very well there. And one of the uh, Major League Baseball records that stood for a long time. Seven consecutive hits. Rennie Stennett. Fouls that off his foot. Yowza. About how 
how much that can hurt when it gets you in the wrong spot. Oh, absolutely. That's why you see a lot of guys wearing that shin guard down there, even covers up the ankle. But when you catch it down on the foot, best thing you can do is exactly what Kessinger's doing right now. It's just keeping the blood flow, keep moving around on it. You don't want that thing to stiffen up. It, what's what's rough is doing something like that, wearing it and realizing there's no way out. You can't, you know, you can't just sit out for a minute and then come back and hit it later. Yeah, let's take a look right there. He hits oh. that one right off the inside, uh, right up there by the big toe. Ouch. It makes it. There's makes no. It there's no protection there, Jeff. Is there? Well, yeah. You'll see some guys will, will wear a, uh, a little flap that will will go over that, but. Great off, great slider right there. Uh, you'll see a lot of guys I wear something like that, but I was never into it. I always, you know what? I, I struggle with coordination enough. <laughs> I didn't need any other, any more obstacles put in my way. Makes it a little challenging to run. Yeah, Full count exactly, here. exactly. To Kessinger. Oh, nice cut off. Justin Levy cutting that play off at third base. Well done, Justin. Yeah, great play across the diamond by Levy. We talked about how Justin was struggling a little bit at the plate, but what a great defender he is. There you have Wolves outfield. Jake Snyder out in left, Drew Campbell up the middle and center, and Ethan Stringer over and right. Levy with that nice play, the hot corner. Fitzgerald has it. Keenan takes a look at that ball. It's Fitzgerald at short. Second base, Jared Pollen. And first base, Logan Wyatt. And right to second baseman, Jared Pollen. And that retires the side from Louisville still. Ahead 2-0. A top 10 in-state battle between ACC and SEC continues tonight on SEC Network when number 10 Florida State visits number 5 Florida. Check your local listings. And Jeff, the Cardinals jump out to a 2 nothing lead and three zeros on the board for Luke Smith. Yeah, Luke's doing a great job today. He's keeping the uh, keeping his off-speed pitches down, keeping the fastball down. it has been a little bit of a uh, Got, got himself in a little bit of trouble early, but was able to work out of it, which was great. I think one of the key things that he's done so well these past three innings is a lot of soft contact from the Rebels. And no leadoff hitter getting on base. So. That's right. Yeah, that's something we touched on early on. You know, his last, uh, coming into the game, his last 16 uh, innings that he's thrown, the leadoff. Eight out of those 16 leadoff guy got on base. And there's one thing every pitching coach in the country harps on is that you you got to get the leadoff guy. Ethan Stringer bringing a 188 batting average to the contest. He's hitting ninth, leading off this third inning. Takes a look at a breaking ball. Doug McKenzie with two strikeouts so far. The lefty. Gave up a single and a home run to lead the game, uh, to start the game, and retired six straight Louisville Cardinals since. Until there. Nice wrap to left. Stringer going to take two. And easily with a double. Great swing by Stringer. I love that right there. I, I don't think that last year he could have hit that ball. I say that because something that I talked about a lot uh, last year was the position of his bat. You see right there, he, he's got his bat at a great angle. Right behind his head, he's got the knob of the bat point of the catcher. That gets him into a position to be able to get his hands inside that baseball and ultimately drive it down the line, keeping it fair. That's a beautiful swing by Stringer. Taking advantage of a few elevated pitches from McKenzie. Three Cardinals hit, three Cardinal hits, a single, a home run, and now a leadoff double to start the third for Ethan Stringer. Jake Snyder got that single and a run scored. So did Louisville. The solid wrap up the middle. And the hits are going to come. You know, you, if you look at Casey's numbers now, 12 and a third uh, innings on the year. Still just four walks. You know, 
Uh, when you have a guy who's throwing that many strikes, you're bound to give up your share of hits. And what I always told pitchers whenever I was playing defense, I said, man, I don't care if you give up five hits in an inning. I obviously don't want it happening every inning, but I'd rather see five hits in an inning than five walks. Exactly. Five walks, you're going to the bullpen. That's right. Because five walks with two hits means three runs. Snyder takes a look at that breaking pitch. Squared to bunt. Yeah, I don't blame him. It's a good time to bunt here. You got a guy like Snyder, you can run a little bit. We've seen him haul it down the, the line. That's what you want your leadoff guy to do. Be able to, to do the job, whether it's get on base or move a runner. You love for your leadoff guy to be a good contact guy that can move the baseball around the diamond. There it is. Hot shot down to Keenan. He recovers. Well played, Tyler Keenan. Snyder's going to be frustrated with that one. If there's one place on the diamond you didn't want to hit it, it was to the third baseman. He, he is solid there. And now that brings up Tyler Fitzgerald. Look at that swing. Yeah, that was a pretty swing by Fitzgerald. And going into this game, we discussed it a little bit. Fitzgerald, not a guy with a lot of power last year. Uh, just a handful, I think two homers on the year. Uh, now I believe he's sitting on two or three, three, three homers on the year so far now. And you know what's interesting? There's only been two home runs in this ballpark this year, and he's got them both. Tyler Fitzgerald. Yeah. Looking maybe for number three yeah. right here in this ballpark. Only two hit this year here. Take that one out of the zone. Fitzgerald looking for another one of those to turn on. I like having Stringer on second to give that pitcher a little bit of extra thought. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely going to help you out as a hitter. Now, if I'm Stringer, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get off, the, get off the base early. And with that left-handed pitcher of, of uh, being Nick Casey, with him being a lefty, I'm going to try and, and see if I can peek into that glove that he's got right there. Mm. As he comes set, there he is. I want to see if I can get that grip, somehow relay it back to my hitter, or figure out when I can uh, maybe get an attempt to, at third. At, their, at the catcher sign? I mean, it almost pick up out of his hand. He yeah. does hold that ball out a little. Right, so if you watch right here, watch how Nick Casey comes set. If we had the other angle, I could... We could see a little bit better. Sometimes a lot of lefties will keep that glove open just a, a little bit, allowing you to, to peek in there and see what he's gripping. If I'm on second base and I can see that he's got a big wide changeup grip, well, I know that I need to be ready because, A, he's not thinking about me at second base, and, B, there's a good chance here. He's already going to be a little bit slower, and, C, good chance that he's going to bounce it. So if there was ever a time to run, second base, one out, change up coming. change up yeah it's time to roll when the casey the athletic the casey filled it out well and you know it was pretty interesting the young man national debate uh he's a debate his student body president at his high school national debater and uh, the old miss baseball sid mentioned that in his home start against east carolina he rolled into the game on his skateboard you gotta love it hey that is something i couldn't do jeff i don't know if you can but Anybody that can roll up to a ball game, skateboarding, and then start a pitching game at home and, and, <laughs> and like that, that's pretty interesting. He's done a fine job, gives up that leadoff double, and has really, now that Wyatt is at the plate, Logan Wyatt struck out his first time up. Yeah, Nick Casey's done a great job settling in. As you mentioned, Stringer rips that double down the line. He's able to come back, shut down Snyder. Excuse me. Then get Fitzgerald. Now, if he can sneak past Wyatt right here without any damage. 
And the call there. They intentionally walked it. All right. They got two balls on, or three ball count on Logan Wyatt. So let's let him go. And that will bring to the plate Danny Orienti. 341 batting average coming into the game, but struck out his last time in the first inning, his last time up. You played for Coach McDonald. What's the mindset that he would preach to you guys with two outs? I know it's a big, big point of emphasis for his offense. Well, two outs, really the, the key here, especially in this situation. You've got a runner in scoring position right here. You want to try and stay up the middle. And he moves both up with an outstanding call. Both saw it quickly, both saw it early, and the lead runner, Ethan Stringer, picks third easily. And Logan Wyatt follows him up, just jogs down to second. Well, you said it best. He he, he got a good jump early and uh, inefficiently. And he got and the breaking look, ball. Well, that's what I was going to say. You <laughs> look at what happened because he bounces a breaking ball. Now, I think there's a very good chance that Stringer peeked in there, saw that he was gripping the breaker, uh, and, and was able to decide to make his move, which with two outs, runner on second base, you never want to make your third out over at third base. So it's a little risky right there. Can't say that I, I fully agree with it, especially with the, the middle of the lineup up right now. You've got a runner in scoring position. I, I'm not sure if I would risk it, but it paid off. Is it something maybe that he's had so many chances? He said so, he's seen so many pitches at second base with that leadoff block. Maybe, like you said, he might have relayed, hey, I, I see this. I, I, can, I can pick this up. Yeah, definitely. Between that and... Uh, you know, figuring out how many looks. You, you know, you'll see when the Casey comes set right here, he'll either look back at Wyatt. He may go no look here. Yeah, he's going to go no look. And pro part of it probably is because Stringer just stole. Uh, you'll see a lot of pitchers do is maybe if somebody steals third on them, you'll see them start to change up their looks. What I mean by that is instead of peeking back at uh, at second base and checking the runner, sometimes they'll, they'll mix in a no look because that's what a lot of runners are going to try and do. Uh, to get their timing on when to steal. And Dillard adjusting to behind the plate duties where he's more used to playing a lot of outfield. Mm -hmm. And they get him. That was a terrific pitch from Doug Nacuzzi to retire the cards. It's 2 nothing as we head to the fourth. And back to Patterson Stadium at Louisville and big Thomas Dillard, the old Miss backstop right now and today. And look at those stats, Jeff. Yeah, he's he's really tearing it up this season. Here you see fifth in the SEC, 40th in the country in average, first in the SEC in homers. This guy's swinging a hot bat right now. If you're the Rebels, if you're Coach Bianco, you're hoping he keeps it up all season. And that's wrapped, just missed the barrel. Didn't quite barrel that up. And a little down below the trademark of that composite bat. First pitch out. You can, that's four for four now for Luke Smith. One of the key stats. Four innings, four leadoff hitters, four outs. Yeah, he's, he's doing a great job capitalizing on the retiring that leadoff guy. Had a little trouble after the leadoff in the first and second innings. Retired the side in the third. Top of the order set down. That shot from Melenic. Hangs in the air for an easy one for Ethan Stringer. And once you can get through those two guys, between Dillard and Melenic, once you can get, get through them, you can take a little bit of a breath. Not too much of one is Zabowski, the six foot five body there. Yeah. That's imposing. He tops one to second. Easy one, two, three. As Jared Pullen retires, Luke retires aside. Back at Patterson Stadium, the Louisville Cardinals leading the Ole Miss Rebels. Two nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. You saw that promo for the ACC Network. It's going to be a lot of fun when it launches next summer, or later this summer, this summer. August 22nd, the official launch. All the great sports from these terrific programs in the ACC. Yeah, absolutely, that's going to be a blast. 
It's going to be great for, for the fans of all ACC schools, not just Louisville. Where they being able to catch all the action on there, it'll be great. Up and down the coast, northeast to the southeast, to the southern tip of Florida. Up to Syracuse and Boston. Inland to Louisville. Nikhazy gets that tapper from Jared Pollan. Handles that one with ease. And is that four pitches, four outs, or uh, three, three or four pitches in the top of the half of the inning from Luke Smith? First pitch yeah. swing in there. Yeah, it may have been. They're, they're moving through pretty quick. Jared Pollan. They're saying, you know, we got an early game tomorrow. Make sure we get back to the hotel and get, get some sleep. Be efficient, as we'd like to, to say, out in the field. Casey gets the sign as he faces Drew Campbell, center fielder. Coming into this game, hitting 293. There you have it. Tomorrow's game slated for a noon start. Another one that should start on time. Actually, elementary school day. If they have school tomorrow, they will be here. That's and right. It will be loud. That's right. Should be even better weather today. Mid 50s, low 50s here in the Ville today. Tomorrow, approaching 70 degrees. Don't have that much problem at Miss, at Ole Miss, right? You have a little better weather there. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but you got to think sometimes that gives gives the cards a bit of an advantage. I can recall my sophomore year when uh, Pepperdine came into town to play. And, it was snowing. Half of those kids had never seen snow before in their life. Something else. Remember when they, uh, four, four years ago, the stadium, they were putting up the big scoreboard and the replay board, uh, the video board, and there was snow all around. Ice storm, actually. McKenzie brings it, gets it fouled off from Campbell. Campbell with 10 RBI, third leading run producer for the cards. Tyler Fitzgerald, he had the two-run homer in the first inning with 18 RBIs, leads the team. Campbell, not a big guy, but a guy that can swing it. One homer on the season, had a big double uh, against Boston College last Friday night. Got things rolling for the cards. Campbell sporting the Glare resistant shades. Were you a shades wearer at the plate? You know, I, I never could get into it at the plate. I think it, I, I always thought about it too much. I always wore them during BP, but then it seemed anytime uh, I was your textbook overthinker at the plate, Paul. So <laughs> if, if something didn't work right the first time, there's a good chance it wouldn't wasn't going to be used again. Late, later in my pro career, I did. A, I used. I, uh, I wore shades a handful of times. Easy pop out to Kessinger. Camps under it. Out number two. We weren't as advanced when I played Jeff. And it was eye black or nothing. Mm -hmm. and I used to have to wear it at night with the with the glare of the off the mask, off my catcher's mask. Glare off the light tower. Casey. Nice delivery against Henry Davis, the freshman. Has seen action. This will be his 11th game. Now batting 286 on the season with five runs batted in. Three of his eight hits are doubles on the year. And Casey going back to back change ups right there. Gets Davis out in front the first time, which is, isn't bad. Tells me Davis is looking for a fastball, which is a good approach to to be relying on. Two freshmen battling here, and he brings a third breaking ball. Very slow breaking ball, 73 miles an hour on that. Looked to be a curve ball. Casey getting ahead of the freshman Davis, one and two. Comes back, Kessinger. Boy, that is sweet. 
And they retire the side in order. To the top of the fifth we go, Louisville up 2 up. Some news and notes from around the ACC. ACC basketball tournament going on right now in Charlotte, North Carolina through the weekend. And Florida State baseball coach, Jeff, Mike Martin, 2,000 wins, the winningest coach in college baseball and in college sports across all sports. And in the Learfield Directors' Cup, the ACC leads all conferences with four university programs, athletic programs in the top ten. It's impressive. Luke Smith has been impressive for the cards. Now we're at the top of the fifth. Get the music off. The empire says, hey. He waving up here at us. Yeah, he's, uh, the music in there. <laughs> the booth two over from us. And Luke Smith starts this fifth inning off with a strike. Again, we'll, we'll go back to your notes from the top of the show. Luke Smith in 16 leadoff situations allowed eight runners to get reach base. That's not a good proposition, but today he's blanked Old Miss in four innings. They have yet to reach the leadoff runner. Can this happen again? Yeah, he's really, uh, really helping himself out, lowering that number here so far. It's the DH. They're going to say Kevin he doesn't Grant. go on that check swing. He's also, he's got his, his off-speed stuff working for him today. Really got a good feel for uh, all of his pitches. It's helping out a ton. There you see he brings that change up again. And wow. Efficient in his leadoff hitters. Another goes down. The fourth strikeout for Luke Smith. Yeah, a great pitch by Smith. Gets Graham out in front. You were a middle line. Just up. that half swing. You see right there. Oh. Just didn't really know what to do. And you saw Graham's face after that. He was just like, well. I'm done. No, nothing doing there. It was a strike if he swings. It's a strike if he doesn't. That's right. And that late swing sets him down. Is a middle of the lineup hitter. You you want guys on in front of you, Jeff. And and this has been a key as Coach McDonald mentioned pregame. We've got to keep their leadoff hitter off base. Absolutely. But just gives your gives your team a lot of momentum. Guys feel a lot better knowing that. You know, There's Jacob Adams rips that one over the head. Louisville second baseman Jared Pollen into right for the second base hit of the game for Ole Miss. Triple from Kevin Graham in the second inning. Adams plates that one to right. Brings up Carl Gendel. 308 at the bottom of the lineup. That's that's a pretty good lineup. Yeah, it's a it's the kind of guy you want to have in the nine hole. Guy who can get on base. He's really your second leadoff hitter. You're rounding out the bottom of the lineup. If he can get on base, as the top is coming up, you're really going to set yourself up for a big inning. Sophomore, Kendall, Florida, came in hitting 308. See what Adams will do at first. Long look from Smith. Just wide of the zone. That one just missing off the outside corner. Not by much. Yeah, Perry Costello back there behind the dish. It's a, a seasoned umpire, very well respected umpire. Tony Walsh at first, Brandon Cooper at second, and Scott Klein at third as we see Tony Walsh get a little action over there at the first base. Umpire station. Smith mobs that one over. Smith delivering. Gets that swinging strike from Gendel. Now, Smith is one of those pitchers. It's rare to, that you take that much time from the stretch and still be really efficient around the zone. Yeah, well, what he's trying to do there really is just, um, you know, he's just trying to, to throw off Adams over there at first base. Play a speed guy, could be a threat. He wants to change up his timing just a little bit. 
You see Adams like, excuse me, Smith likes to, to lift that leg up pretty high as he comes to the dish. It's something that's tough to do if you've got a base, base runner that likes to steal on base somewhere. You usually want to have that lower leg kick. So sometimes switching up your timing and pausing for a little bit longer than you normally do, a lot of times that'll help you to keep that runner off balance. Hard to double play depth up the middle. And there it is. Poland, Fitzgerald, nice slide there. But boy, would have been nice to get out of that inning there. But Speedy Gendel down the line and a great slide by Adams to take away Fitzgerald's opportunity to finish the double play. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened right there. We take another look. Huge lead. Great job by Poland. Gets there. He just struggles with, doesn't want to make the throw. I thought he had time uh, to get it over there, but I don't know if he didn't like the way it looked, if maybe he thought why it wasn't uh, at first. or little bobble in the backswing in, in, the, in, the, in the set, maybe? You know, I don't know. It, it looked pretty smooth. It threw me off, to be honest with you. I don't know what he was doing there, but it's frustrating if you're Smith. You, know, you battle and finally get a guy to roll a ground ball. You definitely want to turn two out of it. Would have loved to have gotten out of the fifth inning right there and not have to face Servadeo. The only thing that I can think, I think maybe he didn't have his legs underneath of him. If you, a little off balance. I said, yeah, I think if you look at it, he kind of reached with that glove just a little bit too much. He was really fighting to keep his right foot on the base. Sometimes if you do that, you don't have your legs under you. You go to make that throw, there's no telling where it's going to go. So if that's the case, then I, I credit Fitzgerald on a smart play. Holding on and holding not on forcing an error. Yeah, definitely. Servadeo getting his first opportunity to lead off uh, for you, baby. the lineup for the Rebels. A sophomore from Jupiter, Florida, came in in the game inning 297. 15 runs, scored four double, nine ribby. Soft speed, little change up from Smith. Yeah, another good pitch from Smith. He's really got that change up working for him today. Holding Gendel close. Two good throws over to the bag. Smith, the 1 1. Hi. Louisville catcher Henry Davis keeping a close eye on Gendel. Don't want to give him an opportunity to get in scoring position. I I'm just really surprised that no no one stepped out on Smith in his long hold in the stretch yeah well that's you know that's one of those things as a hitter sometimes it's worth it calling time so a lot of times you'll get certain umpires that they don't want to give you time whenever you ask for it so sometimes i can even i can throw you off even worse especially with the emphasis in college baseball baseball on the pace of play yeah yeah absolutely Fans react to that, as did Smith. Yeah, they wanted that one. That was a nice back knee slider from Smith. Mm. Looks like it may have been just a little bit too far inside. Servadeo works the count full. First base off the back, Gindel off and running. Probably grounds it to Logan Wyatt. And that is zero number five for Luke Smith, Louisville to back. The 2019 NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is almost here. Once again, 64 teams will be in the bracket and will compete for a national championship. The 2019 bracket will be revealed Monday night at 7 p.m. on ESPN. And the Louisville Cardinals women's basketball team sure to get a number one seed as they have had an outstanding season led by All-American Asia Durr. 
Mississippi State. Their run to the Final Four last year. A dramatic final game against Notre Dame. Basketball is big in these parts, as you well know, Jeff. Yeah, you were quite right. the player as well in your ba baseball and basketball attributes. How about uh, that? You know, I played a little bit. And we were talking, the, the school I went to, there was only a handful of uh, of people that were, were playing sports over there. So if you played one sport, chances are you played uh, all of them. There was an all call for every sport. That's right. And the guards. Now Justin Levy, the number eight hitter in the lineup. Came into the game hitting 190. Maybe popped out to right field in his first at bat. Yeah, Lazy. Levy scuffling just a little bit at the plate. But if they can get him going, the cards will really be in good shape. He's a great defender, great guy to have out on defense in the lineup. The swing's there. It's definitely the opportunity for some powers there. Just got to get it all working together. Nikhazy with a little trouble in the first and third innings. A leadoff single in the first, followed by a two-run homer from Tyler Fitzgerald. And in the third, a leadoff double from on-deck hitter Ethan Stringer. And there is a wrap in the left. Justin Levy. Well, he takes a wide turn. Odd yeah. decision to throw to th a cutoff near third base to Kessinger, but... He was halfway to second there. Yeah, he was. He may have had a shot had he just kept going. With the way they came up, chucked it over towards third. But I love the aggressiveness there. And that's one thing that Coach McDonald uh, really, really preaches here when he's coaching base running is thinking two out of the box. Always be thinking two out of the box. As soon as you make contact and it's out of the infield, you're sprinting thinking about getting a double. He was a base-stealing catcher in his day at the Citadel. And who would he ask you guys to model yourselves after when when it came to that aggression on the base bats um you know the, there really was no one in particular he liked to point out to uh, a lot of the guys that uh, had come before us uh, you know he talked about uh, guys like chris dominguez and um, adam duvall a lot of the other guys All -Star, like that yeah adam guys duvall. guys that you know even some of the other guys, uh, you know, that you, you may not have heard of, Drew Haynes, a guy who was a senior whenever I was a freshman, just people that, that busted it constantly. You know, they were always working hard. And, um, and of course, it leads to an old teammate of yours, Corey Ray, mm -hmm. who steals home and every other base he could possibly want. And there is strike two on Stringer, who doubled in his first at bat in the third inning, being asked to move that runner up to second, get him in scoring position move Levy into scoring position so yeah there you see Corey out there along with all the other All-Americans over the years look at that Walls filling up quick Solak Dominguez Wolf Wyatt Sowers terrific group over the years of course 13 seasons for coach Dan McDonald there at the University of Louisville Doug Nikhazy, pitch number 60 coming up. Eyes Levy and says, hey, let's redo this. Didn't feel comfortable there. Nice fighting it off there at inside pitch by Stringer. Funkhouse Gardner, look at that. Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun time. Modest young man you are, Jeff. And a nice move from Casey. Can they get him? He makes it, and he stays on the bag. Justin Levy timed that well. The speed gets him an extra base. That's a great job by Levy. You know, obviously not trying to get picked off there, but he takes a gamble and he goes first move. When Nikhazy picked off, you know, Levy just decided to buy in. You'll see right here, as soon as he makes the throw, 
Levy does the right thing by just hauling it, trying to get to second as quick as I can, as he can. Getting in a rundown would have done him no good. Still ends up with the stolen bag. Runner in scoring position. No outs here in the bottom of the fifth for the cards. Nikhazy likes to go with that big leg kick. That's just something that he's really going to have to work on if he's going to control the running game. Now, we saw Stringer on his double. He sat at that for a long time. Saw a lot of pitches before with two outs and first and second. Logan Wyatt behind him. They decided to double steal. I think that information was relayed in the dugout to his teammates about what he might have seen from that second base spot. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <clears throat> That's a great pitch by Nikhazy right there. Wow. There was nothing Stringer could do about that one. That's, that's one of the tougher pitches to pick up and then try to leave. You see a big breaking ball like that starting out over the middle of the plate and then just snaps off and finishes right back there on your back leg. I've even seen it. I've seen guys swing at pitches like that, and it, it actually ends up hitting Hit them their in, back the, in leg. the back yeah. leg. And, you know, it's strike three. Love those back leg breaking balls as a, as a catcher. Just to sit behind, barely able to see the glove. Nagazi gets one down, pick off. Good read from Justin Levy. And you see, now with one out, in case you want to pay a little bit more attention over there to Levy. One second. You know, most situations, you don't want to try and steal with less than one out. You don't want to try and steal with no outs or two outs. One out. Maybe you had a failed attempt at, at getting the runner over. I'm going to try and get over to third. It's a good time to look for something, especially with as much off speed as Nikhazy's mixing in right here. And there's that late breaking curveball. Threw it at his front hip, ended up at his front knee on the strike on the inside corner. Casey finding that location and range with his breaking ball. Jake Snyder. Leadoff single, run scored in the first on Fitzgerald's home run. You see, Levy thought about it right there. Mm. You've got to credit Nikhazy on picking that up right as he was turning his head. Gives him that little inside spin move. I'm sure he probably goes no look here. Yep. There he goes. And that's what I was talking about earlier. As a pitcher, you've got to, got to change up your looks on how many times you're looking a second because that's what base runners are looking for. If I'm on second and I'm looking to steal, I want to pay attention and try to see how many times, what's his tempo like? You know, whenever he looks at me, as soon as he starts to turn away, is he is he going to, to the plate then, or does he turn, wait a minute, and then, you know, and then go to the plate? Because it's all about getting that timing. Nikhazy looking to expand that strike zone. He's done it well here. Early on, maybe a, a little, little too much, catching too much of the plate, and now... Inside breaking ball for a strike, outside fastball, and now a little further out for that 0 2 offering. It's wide, 1 and 2 now on Snyder. Well, it's really been a great uh, pitching matchup so far for both sides. I mean, the the only way Louisville ends up on the board so far is with a Pat, excuse me, uh, with a Fitzgerald home run back in the first. And there you have it with runners in scoring position. Both teams 0 for. So you've got to credit both these guys, Nikhazy and Smith. Nikhazy in the third gave up that leadoff double to Stringer. Retired two batters before intentionally passing Wyatt and then getting Oriente on the K. Snyder waits. Gobbled up there, foot race to the bag, won easily by Big Cole Zabowski. And that puts Levy on third, two outs. Approach now, Mr. Gardner, Mr. All-American out there. <laughs> Tell me that now you've got... You've got this guy on third. There's two outs. You've seen Levy, 66 pitches now. Your third at bat, and, and, and you know Fitzgerald has some success against him. A home run and a weak tapper back to him. But well, if I'm coming up to the plate in this situation, I'm 
thinking about, you know what, I'm probably going to get something soft, probably going to get some off speed. And even if I don't, he's probably going to live away oh, with a fast Beautiful bunt. Great. Terrific play. Fitzgerald sees that third baseman back, says, I'm going to take this one right where I can, down the line. I got to tell you, that was one of my favorite plays as a player, Jeff. That was it. Two outs. You see that guy on third. You see the third baseman back. A perfect play and a perfect time. He delivered that pitch right to the bat, right where Fitzgerald could just do the most damage. Well, that was pretty all the way around. You Beautiful. Credit Fitzgerald. You talk about what was I? What would I be thinking in that situation? I can tell you, it wasn't that. I didn't do a whole lot of bunting, but you got to credit Fitzgerald. If you got that tool in your toolbox. And that's a great time to pull it out. Runner on third base, as you mentioned. Third baseman's playing back. And drop that bunt down. Get yourself a, uh, a stake and a hit. Nikhazy throwing first pitch strikes as well. And if you get a breaking ball, that's an easy one to lay down that third base line. It's coming at you. You can angle that back. And, well, Tyler Fitzgerald with all three RBI for the Louisville Cardinals. Take that 3-0 lead. The team has done well getting that one pitch. Five hits now for Louisville, two for the Rebels. Big Logan Wyatt, 0 for 1. First time up, struck out, then was intentionally walked his second time up. They chase Fitzgerald back to the bag. Pitch counts early in the year, you know, dozen and a half games under your belt. And you're thinking he might get 80 or so, maybe 90 today. Yeah, about this time of the year, you're going to start seeing guys uh, go the distance a little bit. You know, you're going to see them extend, run that pitch count. Yeah, up, up there around 100 pitches if they're feeling well and, and throwing well. Especially the, the more the weather heats up more outings they have, you're going to start to see them stretch those guys a little bit. Casey mm. wanted that. Yeah, that's close, and he's got a little bit of run to his fastball, so he starts that one out just a little bit off the plate. Louisville's big bopper, Logan Wyatt. 45 at bat, 17 runs scored, 16 hits on the season. Two doubles, a triple, and a home run. Slugging 5-11. Runners on base, Wyatt, a danger at the plate. 458 with runners on. Boy, that's a classic number three hitter. Producing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Got to love it. He's getting on base a lot. As you mentioned, he's in that three hole. So. 23 bases on balls. So, want him getting on base. Giving your cleanup guy an opportunity to, to get him in. One of the keys to Dan McDonald's middle lineup, they know the strike zone always. And that was part of your game. Know the zone. And now he's worked a full count. Right. Well, they do a great job in this program of, of uh, you know, doing a lot of practice of hitting breaking balls. I like to get guys a lot of work of picking up breakers. And that got up by Dillard, but Fitzgerald can only take second. No two bases there. So now, after that walk, Orienting. A long inning for Nikhazy. What do you tell Oriente? Where's your mindset with two guys on after two strikeouts in his first two at bats? Well, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, same mindset of just, especially for this situation, I'm thinking about just staying up the middle of the field, uh, trying to get Fitzgerald in. Get two outs, trying to squeeze out a run 73 pitches for Nikhazy but a trip to the mound 
Gets that bullpen stirring down the left field line. Deep into the left field corner. And we've got down there. Number 27, Taylor Broadway, Jr., righty reliever. Second career start for Nikhazy. Of course, this bullpen anchored. By Max Chaffee, or no, Parker Karachi. And Casey looking to wiggle himself out of this issue here in the bottom of the fifth. Limit the damage to just one. Zoriente falls behind 0 2. Casey's done a good job keeping Oriente off balance. Yeah, he's got him thinking up there a little bit too much. Struggling with putting a good swing on the ball. He had a great weekend against Boston College. I just scuffling a little bit to, to settle in right here. The 0 2. And there, strikeout number three for Nick. For Oriente, Nikhazy wiggles out of that jam with just one run. It's 3 nothing Louisville as we head to the six. Get in on the excitement of this year's NCAA men's basketball tournament. Compete for a chance to win $22,000 in prizes. Log on to ESPN.com to learn more. Bracket challenges all over the land as March Madness starts and the ACC SEC interconference matchup. Two top 15 teams here. As Luke Smith looking to deliver for the cards. Blanking Ole Miss is potent attack. Two hits, no runs. See those specs on. Luke Smith looking studious out there on the mound. That's right. It's kind of an uncommon look. Great Kessinger at the plate. Look nice. And he rips one down the line. Great stab from Levy. And what a play. You referenced Levy's defense earlier, Jeff, and came through there for the cards. Well, like I was saying, you know, he's. Although he's not doing great at the play right now, that's why you got to have Levy in the lineup. Really knows how to defend the hot corner. You see right there, gets fully extended, makes a great play, pops up quick, wow. and throws a strike right across the diamond to, to Logan Wyatt. Retires. Great Kessinger. I love his stance. We'll talk about that next time if he gets up again. Looks just like his granddad. <laughs> Holds that bat and real quick hands inside. Rip that one to third, and Levy got it. But... Uh, Second time Kessinger is grounded out, second in a row to Levy at third, and brings up Tyler Keenan. He's hit by a pitch in the first, grounded out the second in the third. And another, you know, sixth inning now, six leadoff hitters faced. 0 for 6. And that is a big feather in the cap for Luke Smith. It really is. I mean, with the way we talked about him before, it's you know, thought he hurt us or something. He's done a great job at coming out of the gate, attacking the, the leadoff hitter each inning. I think Coach McDonough was emphasizing that big fella. Let's not let these guys on early. Shot to first. Swallowed up there by Logan White. Handed our flipped on to Smith for the put up. One thing, Jeff, that you love to see in a pitcher is efficiency. And two hits, 
one hit by pitch, one walk. You look at that stat, four strikeouts, and only 74 pitches through five and two-thirds. Yeah, he's right where he needs to be, and if he can go uh, as far as he can go in this game, really helps out the Louisville bullpen, especially with and second mid Dillard skies it for out number three. As we head to the bottom of the six, Louisville ahead, three nothing. Top 10 in-state battle between ACC and SEC continues tonight on the SEC Network when number seven, Florida State, visits number eight, Florida. Check your local listings. Great game so far from Louisville pitcher Luke Smith, freshman Doug Nikhazy for Ole Miss. Battled some, had some struggles early. The first two hitters of the game, a single and a two-run homer. Gave Louisville that 2-0 lead. And Jeff Gardner, you like that two-run homer, but more still, you like that insurance run the cards got in the fifth inning. Yeah, and with where college baseball is now with the, the bats being a lot different than they were, you know, 10 years ago, you've got to... Uh, really focus on some of the the basic fundamentals of the game that uh, a lot of times the, that the college game had really gotten away from the three the, run homers, exactly. the, the multiple home run innings, and exactly. extra base innings. Yeah, exactly, you don't see as much of that anymore. You see more of guys having to uh, you know hit hit behind the runners or, or get a bunt down and uh, really kind of sneak ways, sneak in runs, and instead of relying on getting five or six runs an inning. You've got to fight for just one. And so being able to get that that insurance run back in the fifth, that was huge for the cards. Jared Pullen leading off the bottom of the sixth. Coach McDonald talked about that pregame. Mentioned that, you know, coming from the Citadel, we had to do it a little differently. We had to learn that small ball game. We had to learn to get a guy on, get him over, get him in, that type of strategy. But then when he got to Mississippi, old Miss with Coach Mike Bianco, Bianco, and he said, They've got a little more talent here. We can hit those home runs. We can get those. But now, as you mentioned, Coach McDonald, the game's changing back to a little more strategic, uh, some strategic elements back as Poland grounds out to Tyler Keenan there at third. And, you know, you really start to see it change uh, really with, with my class. You know, when, when I came in to U of L as a freshman, the BB Core bats. So exactly, it was the first year of the BB Core bats. That's when things really started to change, and you know, the teams really had to start adapting to where they couldn't just recruit so many guys that were just big guys that could hit it a long way, but not, uh, you know, not move. Right. Instead, they had to start getting guys that could run a little bit. First pitch swinging is. Drew Campbell lines it to right for out number two. Henry Davis, the freshman catcher, steps in now. He'll want to take a little time. Give pitcher Luke Smith a little rest in that dugout. Over three today. Davis is currently at 273. Davis is over two. Actually, I have him down for a fly out and a ground out. No gloves on this guy. Tough catcher. Were you a gloves guy, Jeff? Always. I was always a, a batting gloves guy. Were you a glove fidgeter, an adjuster? Yeah, I was a little bit. I like to have them uh, really tight. I didn't like to have any uh, any wrinkles in them. So, fouls it back. How many gloves would you, you would just two per game, just one for each hand per game, or would you would you wear them out for a while, or do you were constantly getting new ones? Oh no. Well, so you know, here at UVO, believe it or not, I'm sure a lot of people thought we just had as many batting gloves as we wanted, but not it was, quite. They were hard to come by. 
Uh, you know, you get them every couple weeks, and guys that were in the lineup every day, you know, they they'd get them a little sooner than the, than the other guys. Right. But you know, I, I always tried to preserve them, so I had a little system. My my gamers would once they they'd run out, and I got a new pair of uh, of BGs. Then I would my gamers would become my practice, practice ones. Gloves, right. And then the BP gloves. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. You got to take care of them. Now, would you wear one in your glove out the field? No. No, I never messed with that. I did a little bit back when I caught, but. Oh, I did as a catcher. And the check swing call is no go. Davis will get another shot here. Doug Nikhazy. 87 pitches through five and two thirds. Let's take Ooh. a look. Yeah, it looks like he, he might have gotten a little close, but about as close as you can get. Yeah, without it. yeah. I just I don't think he offered at it. You know, it was one of those where maybe the bat snuck out, barrel snuck out a little bit, but he didn't offer at it. Nice drive, warning track, and that is out number three. Six complete here at Patterson Stadium. Three nothing Louisville. And look at this, Jeff Gardner. The SEC teams in top 25. They own it. Ten teams. Vanderbilt at number one. Florida, Mississippi State, Georgia, Ole Miss, LSU, Arkansas, Auburn, Texas A&M, South Carolina. That's enough. That's there most of them. Right? Ten talk, out of 14. You know, we, we talked about it early. You look at all those teams, man. That There's a reason the SEC is uh, is always in the postseason. I mean, they've got great teams. And, you know, the top 25 looks like that generally all season long. Great teams, great programs, coaches. It's Ryan Olenek steps in, fouls that one off. Luke Smith, tremendous efficiency. And you saw it was brief right there, but you know we talked about we talked about Luke Smith and just how great he's been doing all game just about how efficient he's been with his pitches and rip down the left field line that's going to go for extra bases as finally the rebels get an opportunity with a leadoff runner to Lenick with the double down the line Great swing by Olenek right here. Gets a good bounce position. He's able to turn on it, get the bat head out in front. Hooks it a little bit, but he keeps it fair. It's 458 on the season. I mean, you're not, you know, 458 from Olenek, 434 from Dillard coming into the game. A couple of 300 guys, low 300s. You're not going to keep this old Miss offense down for long. And now, see big Cole Zabowski. There's baseman at the plate. Nice pickoff move. Close. Smith's done a great job at taming this lineup thus far. I mean, that right there is, I believe, his first leadoff hitter that he's allowed is. to get aboard. Indeed. One out of seven. Will miss getting a runner on to lead off the inning. Yeah, that's frustrating right there. I mean, that's a great pitch by Smith. Davis dropping that one. I think if he sticks it, he probably gets that pitch. That one kept moving in on Zabowski. Struck out looking in the second. Grounded out to second in the fourth. It's third at bat of the game. Smith having some trouble locating that zone here against Zabowski. This is really the first sign of trouble that we've seen from him all game. Got a little bit of a sticky situation back in the first, but battled through. Be interesting to see what he does here. Gave up that triple off the glove of right fielder Stringer in the second. And a wrap to center. Will that score? Alenic. Good job. Mm. Want that, want that throw a little lower from the outfield for the cutoff, but Campbell holds Zabowski to a single. Now runners at the corners. 
No outs. Yeah, great job by Campbell coming up, getting to that ball quickly, coming up, making a good, making a strong throw into the, the infield again, a little bit high, but elevated there. Still kept, kept Olenek from scoring on that, which is good. Elevated fastball wrapped up the middle by Zabowski, and now runners at the corners. Kevin Graham. And now we're going to see a mound visit by Coach Williams. Coach Williams, we have some guys in the bullpen warming up. We can't quite see down over that screen down the right field line and foul territory or beyond the uh, fencing and foul territory for the cards. Starting to see some movement down there. Been a couple of guys getting their tosses in. I believe that lefty might be Adam or Elliot, maybe? Not sure I can't really make it out. Kevin Graham, the freshman from O'Fallon, Missouri, came into this game inning 273. He tripled, took Stringer to the wall. And Stringer quit, couldn't quite uh, grab that long fly ball. Graham tripled the DH in his first at bat. Struck out swinging in the fifth. Now with Runners at the corners. Some big pitches here. Luke Smith. Yeah, the best thing Smith can do here, aside from striking Graham out, is get him to roll over something, try to turn a double play, and just nice. minimize the damage. Nice breaking ball to start him off, get ahead of that count. He's only giving up four hits. One walk, hit by pitch, uh, hit batter in the first inning and that is going to be an RBI for Graham and now it's second and third for Ole Miss they put one on the board wow they get him quick don't they yeah that was a great swing there you know Smith starting to show some signs of of fatigue, getting a little bit sloppy with his his placement. Let me take a look right here. Great swing again. Another guy getting the bat head out in front and pulling it down the line. Short, compact, clinical. Kevin Graham. It's a notch on the board for Ole Miss. And now two in scoring position for Jacob Adams. Oh, and that one gets away. From That's a tough one. Henry Davis boots that one away. It's 3-2. That one kicks away from Davis. Almost wonder if they got crossed up, but I don't see Davis going out there to talk to him. I'm not sure what exactly happened on that one. Almost looked like he, he went to stand up right as that ball was breaking. I can't foresee Smith staying out there for too much longer. Let's take another look at it. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think bounce. he just read the hop wrong. I think he thought it was, looks like Davis thought it was going to bounce a little bit further out in front of the plate. So he stood up a little too high, and unfortunately that ball kicked away. Wild pitch on that one as it went into the dirt. And as you mentioned, freshmen will probably look at that tape over and over in the coming weeks and say, stay down on it. Smith, no outs. He goes to third. Adams. You Jacob see, Adams, a senior from Conway, Arkansas. An opportunity here. You see the back pick right there by Smith. That's something that you don't see a lot of teams do, especially in a situation like this. I mean, usually you don't want to risk, risk it right there. Risk throwing the ball away, especially with nobody out. Right back through the box, knocked down, but a single clean for Jacob Adams, and the score is tied at three. Yeah, credit for credit Poland for keeping that ball in play, but excuse me, keeping it in the infield. But that's frustrating right there. Great job by Ole Miss. Again, it's the simple things. He stays compact, 
Adam stays compact, keeps it up the middle. He's able to get the runner in from third base. Up to the plate is pinch hitter Chase Cockrell. It's frustrating for Smith as he's had really a great outing all, all the way up until this inning. He has the, the senior super. pinch hitter. Mm -hmm. Chase Cockrell. Kirian in the bullpen for Louisville. Surprised that Smith has been given all these hitters. Jeff, since I'm sorry. They, since they've gotten these hits, are you surprised a bit that they've been given all these that he's been given all these hitters? Well, you know, I don't think they were playing on on the wheels falling off right here. Uh, you know, he's as I, as I mentioned, he's had a great game uh, all game long. Now he's really just starting to struggle. So it's tough to get guys up and, uh, and moving and, and ready to come in that quick. I mean, all, all these runs have happened pretty quick. Double play would pep up the uh, Louisville crowd some. Straight called there. Against Cockrell. Easily back for Adams. Comes <laughs> set. Sits there a long time in that set position. You've seen Davis. He was looking to really pop that throw down, but a good idea not to risk it there. Yeah, especially with where the game is now. 3-3. Three, three. You got nobody out. There's really no no reason to to risk anything right now. All the damage has been done. It's time to buckle down and throw strikes and let the defense make plays. Skies that one. And easily corralled there. Jared Pullen records the first out of the inning. Slowed down this potent Ole Miss attack. Out of the order. Five, six, seven, and eight. The old Schlemiel, Schlemago. Awesome Pfeffer Incorporated. You don't remember that Laverne and Shirley intro, do you? You know what? Now I'm a uh, <laughs> little too I'm little unfamiliar too beyond with that you one. there. Some of our. And we'll step away. We'll come back with the bitching change. It's 3 3 here at Patterson Stadium. Ole Miss strings together. Four hits in a row, resulting in three runs. And now Michael Kirian in, the lefty for the cards, on the mound now. Kirian coming off a pretty good outing this weekend against Boston College. He went two innings pitch, two hits, one strikeout, no walks. There you have his numbers on the year in five innings. He's got five strikeouts and no walks. Just might be the remedy that the cards need right here to get out of this one. Lefty can bring some heat. Nice sharp breaking ball. Give all these lefty swinging hitters from Ole Miss a different look. As they turn over the lineup. Servideo, the left-handed hitter. And the righty, Kessinger. And if they can get there, the lefty, Tyler Keenan. They have Smith. Definitely frustrated with the way he's out again today. I think everybody is. The good thing is, top four of the Ole Miss lineup, 0 for 12 combined. So he did a, a, a really strong job there. 
Yeah, there you and have Luke it. Smith. There you have how he finished off the day. Six, six and a third, six hits, three runs, just one walk and four Ks. I mean, he did a great job of, of taming the lineup. Most of those hits coming right there at the end. Four in a row to lead off the seventh. You could see him shaking his head, contemplating, what did, it, what did I need to do better there? Kyrian smokes an 88-mile-an-hour heater right on the inside corner. Against Anthony Servideo. 0 for 3. The strikeout. Looking in third. Nice stop there in the dirt. Davis. It's a rather aggressive lead from Adams at first. So keep an eye on Jacob Adams there. One out. That aggressive job. There we go. Adams reads that breaking ball, bounces in the dirt, gets away from Davis, and now runner in scoring position. Yeah, great read Rebels. by Adams. It's a secondary, sees that ball down. He's able to scoot up to <laughs> second base. Davis did a great job of blocking it. Struggled finding it uh, after it hit him. Looked oh. around a little bit, couldn't find it. Adams, aggressive as you said. On that secondary lead, it's Kyrian. Induces Servideo to foul that off. Old Miss bullpen warming up. Connor Green, number 18, a righty, senior. Maybe he'll see some action in the bottom of the inning. It's Kyrian. It's his sign. And that is a beautiful pitch. That was a great pitch by Kieran. The fastball right there at the knees. Man, that was a beautiful pitch. Second strikeout looking. Servideo. It's only his first game leading off the top of the order, but... Cardinal pitchers put him out four straight times. Now Gray Kessinger get those hands. Kyrian fakes that to second. To hold Ole Mitz to this three spot here in the seventh. Davis, nice job to block that one. His time as well between pitches. Kieran slipping down the mound a little bit there. Flew open and that one went wide right from our vantage point. 90 miles an hour that registered. Let's see if we can dig in here on this mound. It's pulling that fastball just a little bit too much. Hanging on to that ball just a little too long and releasing it off to his glove side. Instead of releasing that ball out in and front. They're going to send Kessinger to first. The intentional base on ball. Yeah, and I don't blame him. 3-0, this situation. You know, you're not gonna you don't want to give him anything to hit, so you might as well just save your pitcher the trouble and Put him on. Now the lefty swinging, Tyler Keenan. There you have Tyler Keenan's numbers for this season. 305, two doubles, five homers, 26 RBIs. Do not, cannot let him turn on one here. No. Oh, well located. 
What did you not like as a left-handed masher in your day? Jeff, what did you not like to see in this situation? Under the hands, low and away on the breaking, what was your, hey, I, I got to beware of this one. Uh, for me, I just you know obviously you're you're going to be get pit, you're going to get pitched uh, softly here, so you're going to see a lot of off speed for the most part. Um, for me, I, I really didn't mind if it was up under my hands. I felt like I could get the bat out to it in a way. Same thing. It, my my mindset was kind of a way. So really, for me, I just I hated change ups pretty much all the way around, but especially in this situation. Mm. Make you lean for one. I believe it's 0-2. Now, I think they called that a strike on the second pitch. but And that will do it as Davis to Wyatt. It's 3-3 now. Old Miss ties the score with Lobo coming to back. Welcome back to... Patterson Stadium here in Louisville, and you see the ACC teams in the AP Top 25, Florida State at 6, NC State, Louisville, North Carolina at 12, 14, and 15, and Clemson at number 20. Some great teams in the ACC and the SEC, as you saw that graphic earlier, 10 of the 14 teams in the SEC in the Top 25. Fresh arm on the mound, Connor Green, number 18, the senior right-handed pitcher, also Catching now, number 13, Cooper Johnson for Old Miss. And moving to left field is catcher Thomas Dillard. So, new catcher, Cooper Johnson, new battery, Connor Green. Connor Green, the senior. Cooper Johnson. Junior. Mundelein, Illinois, batting 297, so he'll be behind the plate. Catching the senior green and for Louisville. It's third baseman Justin Levy. He'll be followed by pinch hitter Zeke, Zeke Pinkham. As Levy takes that first pitch from Green for a strike. You see Green's delivery. He really brings that three-quarter. He holds that ball behind his head and just sort of slings it as he comes around. And, uh, Doc Holliday style. Yeah, that can be tricky to pick up. He likes to close off that front side. Kind of turns real big and speeds that elbow up a little bit. Speeds up that arm at the end. Yeah. Gives you a little different look. One on Levy. Mm. Mm. As it gets a little chillier here, it definitely has an effect. Your feet get cold, and when you get one off the toe, there is nothing there. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, and that stings right there. There's, there's no protection right there. It's hard to make a cleat unless you uh, were playing in some steel, steel toes. No fun to play in those. Yeah, it'd be a little, a little difficult to scoot around the bases. Yeah, that next pitch is always frustrating, trying to hit with your foot throbbing. Mm. And Green, 90 mile an hour. Nice high fastball. Gets it past. Levy. Freshman Doug McKenzie. Delivered six strong, six inning, five hits, three earned runs, two walks, five Ks, and 89 pitches, and that's a solid outing. That's yeah, a great outing. Kept your hits below the amount of innings you pitched. Same with the strikeouts are right up there, close with the amount of innings you pitched. Kept his walks down. And a quality start in the big leagues, right? Six that's right. innings, three that's right. runs or less. I mean, really a, a great game all the way around. See Pinkham here for the cards. Senior. Elizabethtown Panthers. High school just south of Louisville. 
45 miles south and had a prolific career there. He may come in for a double switch. We'll see. As Davis made the last out of the sixth inning. And a great breaking pitch from Connor Green. Yeah, that's tough right there. It's tough just coming off the bench and, and trying to hit, especially late, late in the game during these early season games where it's a little chilly. It's a nice day out today, but still a little brisk. As soon as those muscles will tighten up, it's tough to provide a good at bat. Way off the plate. Deuce is wild again here. Second hitter in a row. Connor Green looking to keep Louisville bats at bay here in the seventh. It's a good pitch there. Just misses with that, that backdoor slider. As a lefty hitter, there's there are two things you can do. Three things. You can look at it, you can swing and miss, or you can just dribble it down the line. Is that right? It's a good pitch. Yeah, you, it's, it's tough because it looks like it's out on that... Uh, Far batter's box line, really. But then right at the last second, it breaks in. Looking at the replay there, I think that one stayed out just a little bit too far. Right. Think of working. Connor Green into a full count. And that gets him looking. 89 miles an hour right on the upper inside corner. Yeah, I think Pinkham knew that he missed that one, but he tried selling it as best that he could. You can see he was like, yeah, that's strike three, but I might try it. He gets a bat on that. It's going probably into the first base dugout, global dugout. That was a terrific pitch from Connor Green. Yeah, good pitch, and it's clear right there at the way Pinkham froze that he was not thinking fastball. So Stringer out of the game for Pinkham, and now Jake Snyder at the plate. Snyder, a single in three at bats. Scored a run in the first. And base runners against McKaysey in the first, third, fifth, and that is it. Kessinger. Moving well to his left. Foul pop out. And they get out of the inning. One, two, three. We're tied at three as we go to the eighth. Old Miss coming to the plate. Scores from around the ACC. Let's take a look at these, Jeff. Battle of the Keystone State. It's 5-3 Penn State over Pitt in the top of the eighth. Holy Cross trailing Boston College. 11-4. Virginia Tech up on Richmond. 6-3 in the sixth. Florida and Florida State just getting ready to uh, for first pitch. North Carolina up on Gardner-Webb through seven. It's 13-7. Saw a couple others there as well. Looks like a lot of teams got going with the early afternoon start today. These cooler climbs now that we've moved the clock ahead. A little more daylight here in the Ville. Michael Kirian still on the mound, the big lefty. First time facing Thomas Dillard moves him to the right side, the switch hitter. 0 for 3 on the day. Three flyouts, two to right field and one to center field. New right fielder is Trey Leonard for the cards. Away, wasted one, one and two. Leonard, the sophomore. Bats left, throws right. Miller now in his left field position, moved from behind the dish that last bottom of the seven. Don't want to get into his wheelhouse. Absolutely not. Can put one heck of a charge into it. Thomas Dillard. Did he go? He did not, says. First base umpire, Tony Walsh. I'll take another look. The fans wanted it. Good. Oh, no, yeah, he held up. Lou 
Kirk Smith did a good job through six innings, but that seventh is undoing. Four straight hits. Leadoff hitter. Well, from the number five hitter, Olenek and Zabowski, and Graham and Adams. Double, single, double, single. Coach Bianco loves seeing that. And that one's laced into the left center field gap, but right there is Jake Snyder. Ooh. Dillard put a charge into that one. He put a great swing on it. I think we heard that one came off the bat around 103 miles an hour. Great job by Snyder sneaking over to the gap. Didn't look like it really even came off the bat that hard. Didn't sound like that it made that great a contact. But that's right. just kind of that's the kind of power that Dillard has. Tomorrow at noon, you come right back. We've got a great game here today. Two terrific story programs in the last decade and a half. Right here at noon for Patterson Stadium. You join us here on the ACC Network Extra. Lenick, who started off that 17th inning, the double to the left field down in the corner. Hooked it, but not far enough to go foul, and that ball just missed inside. Kirian wanted that one. Yeah, good pitch by Kirian. He's done a great job coming out of the pin here and stopping the bleeding for the cards. One for three. Ryan Olenek. Great and pitch right there. Took something off that one. It's breaking ball from Kirian. Now, four fifty-eight on the season, one for three. Batting average goes down a little, but a double and a run scored. Nice pitch, jams him. Lenick gets retired on the pop fly to Logan Wyatt. It's a big out there. Yeah, that was huge. He's able to get that heater in on Olenek. Jams him just a little bit, gets the fly out to first. Great job right there. If you can get through, uh, if you can get through Zabowski right here, it's really going to set the cards up for uh, a good spot in the ninth, especially if they can come back and put a run on the board here in the bottom of the inning. Big Cole Zabowski way out in front of that. Nice diving cutter. 91 miles an hour. Came back with it again. Great spot right there. Perfect location. A guy like Zabowski not really looking to poke that to left field with two outs here in the eighth. Excellent job there from Curian. Can he retire him? Fights it off. And that's what experienced hitters do. You get behind in the count, nibble, nibble, just keep biting, fighting, and tipping off pitches. Yeah, that's key. You find yourself in a corner like this, you got to just choke up a little bit, try to stay short in battle. He does just that, but easy ball for Levy across the diamond. We're tied at three, headed to the bottom of the eighth. Game for Louisville's Tyler Fitzgerald, three RBI. See him first at bats, first inning. Crushes one over the fence in left. Yeah, he got the cards. Go yeah, he got the cards going with that two-run homer. Great way to start the game, and then later, look at that perfect. But I love seeing that three RBIs. Just took what. Dub Nikhazy was giving him there. Yeah, nice just coming at him. Absolutely. Fitzgerald, great job today. Really leading the offense and for these guys. If you can get long ball and small ball out of your number two, whoo, 
Yeah, that's huge. And that's just how versatile Tyler Fitzgerald is. Being able to add more of a power presence to his game this year has really helped out a lot. I think it's going to help the cards a lot uh, as the season progresses. Three home runs, 19 RBI, 322 batting average. And his slugging percentage, well, near near 450 now. Came into the game at 429 with his slugging. Mm, good take right there. Yes, it was. Connor Green was hoping for one there. As we mentioned, new battery. Green and Cooper Johnson, the catcher, came in last inning along with Green. Get ahead of the run producer Fitzgerald for the cards to one and two. And that excellent breaking ball gets Fitzgerald out in front. Well done, Connor Green. Yeah, great job by Green. Fitzgerald looking good all game, but gets fooled right there. That's what a good pitcher does. Comes in, keeps a good hitter off balance. Give the credit to Green on that one. To take a straight change like that on a 1-2. Looking for an opportunity. One swing of the bat. Logan Wyatt now. Well, if you're Louisville late in the game, this is the, the heart of the lineup. This is who you, got, who you want uh, up right here. Attention a walk and then a walk in the fifth and now up in the eighth. 0 for 1 is Wyatt. Cade in the first. A level with six, seven strikeouts in the game. Eight now that Fitzgerald as well. Wyatt. Four hopper to second. Easy pickings there. For Jacob Adams. Tony Oriente looking to redeem himself. Three strikeouts of the eight total. Was off balance all game from Doug Nikhazy, the lefty freshman. Kept Oriente off balance. See what he can do here against Green. He scuffled a bit today early, but Oriente is a guy that I really like like in this Cardinal lineup. You always trust him to most of the time give you a good quality at bat. 15 hits on this season. Three doubles. 11 RBI. We've got the train going by in the outfield. Big long train here. And see if we can put one near that. To Kessinger. And no, he's safe. He makes a mistake there. That ball scooped in the dirt and unable to scoop it up with Zabowski. That ball sort of tailed and dove and Louisville with some life here in the eighth. Yeah, he goes to scoop it right there. Not quite able to, to hang on. Got See a, Zabowski over there. Got a runner for Zabowski. Or I'm sorry, for Oriente. Zabowski. Couldn't quite pick it. Goes for the scoop. Closes the glove just a little too early. And that thing pops out. There's no control in it. This could be a situation where, where Louisville takes advantage of it. You can only hope. That's what that's what they're going to have to do. And so you see they bring Lucas Dunn in to pinch run. It's a guy with some wheels. A couple stolen bases on the year. Lucas Dunn dives back to the bag. Got the sophomore. Jared Pullen steps in. Just his third start of the season at second base for Poland. He's played in now his seventh game. Came into the game at 143 average. Three RBI. A double. One of his two hits. ground out to the fly out today nice lead green chases Lucas Dunn back to the back Green's really worried about Dunn over there 
Try to shorten up his lead as best as he can. No damn McDonald wants that runner in scoring position for the cards. Breaking ball swing right through that one. If you're pulling right here, you gotta try to contain yourself, not not do too much. Try to slow it down. See the ball deep. You're not trying to win the game here or tie it. Just trying to get this, excuse me, just win the game here. The game is tied, but you're not trying to do too much here. Just try to move the runner, move it on to the next guy. And Poland just being fooled twice now by Green. Those two change-ups, absolutely devastating. Comes Green and gets him ahead 0-2. That was too easy. Three straight breaking balls retires Poland. Green, two scoreless. It's three all as we head to the ninth. Four straight hits for the prolific Ole Miss offense. Double, single, double, single. Scores three runs in the seven. Jeff Gardner, that uh, tied up the score. They got to Luke Smith. Well, we knew that this Rebel lineup could hit. They showed it uh, right there in the top of the seventh. I mean, great swings. There you had uh, a couple of RBI, uh, RBI double, RBI single in there. Great job by the Ole Miss Rebels. Staying quiet all game, but they really turned it on here at the end. Wild pitch also scored a run as they got to Luke Smith. Both pitchers starting pitchers, Doug McKenzie and Luke Smith, giving up three runs in. Six innings and six and a third for Luke Smith. As Garrett Schmeltz, the new pitcher for the Louisville Cards, the freshman lefty from right here in Louisville, Pleasure Ridge Park High School. The outstanding program here in town. The late Bill Miller, longtime coach. Almost, I believe he had over a 1,000 wins. He's pinch hitter Tim Elko, the sophomore from Lutz, Florida. And this lefty smelts, you're really, Louisville's going to love seeing him on the mound. Great control, great composure. Sneaky fast with a, a nasty hook there. She just saw. Yeah, that's key for a guy like Schmeltz. Not a big guy, but guys throwing from the left side. Not throwing a, a, with a lot of velocity, but as you mentioned, it can be sneaky sometimes. But for him, his, his, uh, his money's going to be made with his off-speed pitches. Touched 89 on that fastball. His one-two and competitive drive propelled him a long way. Great high school career. Got away from him. Let's dig in. We tap her to short. Well played on the run, Tyler Fitzgerald. Three RBIs, couple of nice plays with the glove. Louisville's player of the game so far, Tyler Fitzgerald. Yeah, great play by Fitzgerald right there. Charges that ball, gets it on the short hop, and he's able to control his throw while getting rid of it quick. You see right here, he stays low, sees that ball into the glove. Knows that he's got no time to waste. Louisville shortstops have been... Terrific through the years. Pretty much the last decade in a track bunt there by Adams. Well played by Logan Wyatt. A great job by Wyatt. Charging there. He's able to make the play and have the savvy to get over there and make the tag. Now for the Rebels. Number 13, Cooper Johnson. His first at bat of the day. Came in the bottom of the seventh to catch. That moved Thomas Dillard, the starting catcher, out to left field for the Rebels. Let's see what Johnson can bring. I'm going to walk out to the mound. little conversation here. Yeah, you don't see Coach Mack come out of the come out of the the dugout without making a change too often. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him go to the pin here. There it is. 
Michael McAveen, the junior righty, going to come in and relieve Kirian. Excellent job by Kirian. Got two thirds of an inning out, the seven, and a full inning and two thirds more. So two and a third innings for Michael Kirian. Or, or I'm sorry, Schmelz, you're right. Michael Kirian had one and three. We'll be back. Coming out of the bullpen for the cards is the righty Michael McAvee. There you have his stats on the year. Three and a third, one walk, six strikeouts. This is a guy who cards like to go too late. Uh, in the event they can't go to Bobby Miller, their uh, closer. This is another guy you may see late in the game, just like here. Not, not a safe situation uh, right now. So they're going to go to McAvee. This guy, he's got a hard fastball. And, that's his M.O. That's what he's going to try to attack these guys with. And lefty Schmelz with two-thirds of an inning. Well done by him. Michael Kirian, one and two-thirds innings. And Luke Smith, six and a third for the Cardinals. It's back of him, ready to face sophomore Cooper Johnson. Came in in the seventh inning to catch. Hunter Green for Ole Miss. Ninth inning, two outs. Somebody looking for a big at bat here. Back of him high with his first offering, 94. You mentioned earlier Tyler Fitzgerald, the long lineage of really, really good shortstops for Coach Dan McDonald at Louisville, as well as Good closers. You got to you got to play with two of them. They happen to be brothers from the outside of Chicago. The Birdie brothers, Nick and Zach, is that breaking ball in first strike. Yeah, Nick and Zach, both flamethrowers. It was always nice having them come out of the pen late. You know, knowing that you could go to some guys, especially if you had guys, you know, throwing that. We're in the mid 80s or upper 80s, lower 90s. You run somebody out who's running it up to 100 miles an hour. That's huge. And that 95 mile an hour offering to fly out to right field to end the top of the ninth. Louisville with a chance to win it. Will we return? Welcome back to Patterson Stadium, just a few blocks down the road from Omer Stadium. University of Louisville winning softball team playing Moorhead State. Doubleheader today. The Cards took the first one from the Eagles, 8 0, and now lead in the bottom of the first, 4 0. So good things happening for the University of Louisville softball program today. As the Cards here at Patterson Stadium get ready for an opportunity to win this in walk off style, Jeff Gardner. Big at bats coming up for the cards here in the night. I couldn't have said it better myself, Paul. And got some good bats coming up right here. Drew Campbell, Campbell. Mm. had a great weekend this weekend. A couple big hits. That is four straight 80 mile an hour changeups from Connor Green, all inducing swinging strikes from the last two Louisville hitters. Yeah, they're making another one right there. He's He's just sticking with what's working. And Louisville's got to make an adjustment. They've got to slow it down and sit on this ball if they're going to be effective here. Check that out. There's a rally cap for you right there. A little bit different. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. That's a first. That 89-mile-an-hour fastball just laid the bat on it. Does Campbell for a lazy fly ball to center field. Picked up by Olenek. So one away for the Cards. Boy, he can do six straight swings. Five of them swing and miss on that changeup. That is something else. Poland to retire him in the, the bottom of the eighth. It's one of the most effective pitches in baseball. It's Love it. I always tell these young guys, you know, don't focus so. I know, I know you want to throw curve balls. You want to do this, do that. But don't focus so much on that. Learn how to locate a fastball and throw strikes and learn a changeup. If you can learn a changeup first. You're going to be able to do a lot of damage as you get older. Henry Davis over three. Fly out those last at bat. Net one. 
Well, you know, seven straight or six out of seven 80 mile an hour changeups. That one's 81 and it's a ball. Finally, the guys looked at it. The Louisville batter, Henry Davis, takes it for a ball. Spits on another one right there. Hopefully, sometimes all it takes is one guy to be able to do it and slow down that pitcher. Reduce that momentum. Get it back to the home side cards. Connor Green, two and a third shutout innings for the Rebels. There's the heat. Now you just have to battle, freshman. Bat on ball, looking to put it in play. Henry Davis. And he cannot. He swings through another changeup. I don't know what is on that ball, but Jeff Gardner, Connor Green has got something going. Well, he's doing a great job of, you know, not slowing his arm down too much. That ball looks like a fastball coming out of the hand. When you're set up for a fastball, you're timed out for it. And now all of a sudden, that thing, the, the pitcher releases the ball and then pulls a the string and pulls it back closer to him. You're going to have a lot of trouble hitting that pitch. And with two outs, that first pitch offering just a lazy fly ball. Levy for the out. We'll be back with extras. ESPN and the ACC bring you ACC Network coming August 22nd. 15 universities all on one network will have a new place to call home. Get or visit getaccn.com to learn more. Bonus baseball. Here's TNT Dynamite on them. They played satisfaction from the Rolling Stones earlier. I can't get no. Wait a minute. Jeff, I get satisfaction from free baseball, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. These card fans staying tough here. Some temps get down into the 40s. And on the mound still for Louisville is Michael McAveen in the 10th. Got the last out of the ninth. Lead off hitter, Servadeo. 0 for 4 today. Two strikeouts. And McAveen getting some good work here. Neither team probably wanting to use their closer today. May need to do so. 96 mile an hour in her third. Serviedo Fervidale takes a look at that one. Good luck with that one. That's tough to, to catch up to in on the hands. Middle. Snag. Well played there. Jared Poland. Retires Servadeo. Five down. Good swing by Servadeo, but almost hit well. Good location for McAveen. Over. Yeah. Gray Kessinger. Intentionally walked in the seventh. A couple of ground outs at third base and a fly ball to left. See McAveen, 94 to 96. Generally, Jeff? Yeah, that's where he, he stays for the most part. One of these young power arms that the, the cards have. Not super young, junior, but to me that's young. <laughs> it's where I'm at now. Kessinger, nice job trying to draw that Louisville infield. Justin Levy playing way back at third. Can't quite get that one down where he needs to. Talk about closers in the long history of great Louisville closers. Some with greater lettuce on top of their on top of their head than others. <laughs> some blonde locks, some crazy locks, great looks, but great arms all. 
countered by some really good ones in that old Miss bullpen, most notably Connor Green with three shutout innings. Not allowed a Louisville hit. Green with five strikeouts in his three innings of work. Only allowed one base runner on an error. That throwing error from Kessinger that big first baseman Zabowski could not snag in the dirt. Or in the artificial dirt. Only dirt on this field is right where you see the mound. Nice job to take from Kessinger. Mentioned his dad, his grandpa, venerable shortstop of the Chicago Cops, Kessinger, in the 70s. That is a sweet looking pitch, but it's a good get it. Yeah, it's a good pitch there, right there by McAfee. That hard slider must have missed just a little bit down, just a little down below the knee, hard to take on a one two pitch. Run on 2 2 count. Kessinger works at full. Just a battle here. Kessinger, another foul back. I like seeing him choking up there with two strikes. Yeah, absolutely. A little extra back control from the Old Miss shortstop. Skies that one short right. That's put away for out number two. Now Tyler Keenan, big left handed popper. And after your own heart, Jeff Gardner. That's right. Lefty McThump. <laughs> Wanted to put a charge into that one and change the score. Yeah, it's tough, but you don't have to. You don't have to do too much with a guy throwing this hard. Focus here needs to be on just making good, solid contact, staying through it. And for McAveen on the mound, location vital here against this big swing and bat. Count even at one and one. Keenan hit by a pitch in the first. Three ground outs follow. Or two, two ground outs and a strikeout. Great pitch there. There's that backdoor slider we were talking about earlier. So tough to hit as a, as a lefty. Ready, let's go with that ball. Looks like it's in the right-handed batter's box. Right there, comes back. We well, talked about the hands of Davis. He does a great job there, too. Of really framing that, make sure it's in the end zone. Anticipating where it's going to finish, getting there with solid hands. Henry Davis. Ooh. There's another. That's his second time he's been hit today. First inning and now in the tenth. That's frustrating right there. You Back battle that whole time and get him into get him get two strikes on him and then hit <coughs> hit him. But that's just part of the game. strikes. Get a little too maybe a little quick on that delivery. That'll bring up Thomas Dillard, the guy you do not want to face. Runner on base, but good to see. Yeah, take another look. He sets Keenan up with that. Out. Right, he takes that right off the elbow. He, he set Keenan up with the backdoor slider. They wanted to hammer a fastball hard inside. Just got away from him a little bit. Hits his elbow right in that funny bone area. Yeah, that's no fun. That's rough. Hits that ulnar nerve. Not fun or probably funny. Not, probably he's not feeling his hand right now. 
Thomas Dillard, the switch hitter, back to the left side. Dangerous, dangerous middle of the lineup for Old Miss. And he chops one to second. Easy retirement there for Jared Mullen. Louisville looking to walk off in the bottom of the tenth. Tied in. Bit of free baseball here on the ACC. ESPN Network Extra. Fun times here at Patterson Stadium. Jeff Gardner, Paul Major here to call this extra inning action. And Jeff, it's that time where you know you've got this opportunity, one swing of the bat, but you got to put someone on base sometimes and and make Connor Green do a little work. He has been outstanding in his three innings of relief. Yeah, if Louisville's going to be effective here and ultimately win this game, they've got to spit on the changeup. That's what Green's been so effective with here recently. They've got to see the pitch down, let it go. Try to get something good to hit. Got our fielder in. There's that first pitch swinging. And that's an easy ground out to second for Trey Leonard. Picked up there by Adams and one away. A little aggressive in his first at bat was Leonard. What a way. Now it's top of the order. Snyder singled in the very first bout of the game. And he looks at that change up for a strike. Yeah, good look right there. Thought about the bunt. Decided not to. Again, Green just going with that change up. Such a good solid performance. That one's driven in the gap left center. Can they get down? Back off the warning track, off the top of the wall. Will he go for three? Snyder makes the turn. Hustle, hustle, and he makes it standing. And that is the way you get a rally and a crowd inspired in extras. Jake Snyder, the second hit of the ball game, a triple in the gap in left center. It's a beautiful piece of hitting right there by Snyder. Wasn't sure about it. I knew it sounded good off the bat. I'm sure he thought the same thing. That ball just seemed to keep on carrying. Dillard just wasn't quite sure how to play it out there. It's his second triple on the season so far. Great job hustling around the bag. Now the cards. That'd be set up with a runner on third. Two opportunities. Two uh to walk this one off. If you're going to try and do it, can't think of a better guy to have up than Tyler Fitzgerald. Tyler Fitzgerald has knocked in all the runs on the day. Three runs scored. Laid one down. Two outs and a runner on third. That was Levy in the fifth inning. Score a run. They're going to intentionally walk him. They're going to bring in the infield. Double play depth with one out. See what they can do against Logan Wyatt. Ten strikeouts, 23 walks on the season for Wyatt. Now they're going to put Wyatt on as they well. They are as well. Okay. I can't say that I blame him. That's a good idea right here. Load up the bases. A hit's going to win the game no matter what. You got to orient. Might as well give yourself as many chances to, to get a double play as you can. Orienti. Struck out three times, reach base error in the eighth inning. Two out error on Kessinger. That was on the throw, wasn't it? Because it was in the dirt, pulled him off the bag, and he yeah. couldn't scoop it. It's a at first, but I'm not sure if they called E6 or E3. I thought it was a six. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it may have been a three. It might have been three. Okay. This past weekend against. Uh, Boston College, and we will have the 70s walk up music theme. Mm -hmm. Now, you have those games, some of your favorites from the weekend, or you can you don't even know the names of the songs, Jeff, young Jeff Gardner. They didn't play as much rock. I'm more of a rock and roll from the 70s guy. I, I played, would have some played disco and stuff like that. I would have had Chic La Freak. I would have had ACDC Thunderstruck. That would have been mine for right now. Base is loaded. Got Wyatt at first. 
or Oriente at first, or Fitzgerald at second. Yep. Wyatt at first, and Snyder at third. Four career triples for Jake Snyder. Great shot to the gap in left. Now we've got Zach Britton in the pinch hit for Oriente. And they got painted black going, and that's what Connor Green has been doing since the seventh inning. But into trouble here. Bases juiced, one away. And they're trying to induce a ground ball, double play depth for the middle infield of Kessinger and Adams. First pitch swinging. This can be nerve-wracking right here if you're Britain. Coming off the bench, cold. Trying to win the game here. Toughest thing is just calming down, realizing that walk is just as good as a hit here. So you don't want to go chasing anything. You want to take your best swing. If you can elevate it, great. Sophomore getting an opportunity. And he lines it to right, walks it off, and the Cards win 4-3 in 10. Zach Britton delivers to give the Cards the first of these two games against Ole Miss. What a performance. What a game. And the team just dogpiling in right field. So it's a little of a win. For Jeff Gardner, I am Paul Dejar saying so long from Jim Patterson Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, where the final score is Louisville 4, Old Miss 3. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on the ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks, everybody, for watching.